Hi, this is Doug7, and today I'm going to show you how to use Icenium Live Sync with your Samsung Galaxy Note 10 inch tablet. The Galaxy Note 10 inch tablets become quite popular, and of course, as a uh, Android based device, it is capable of working with Icenium Live Sync and having Icenium applications deployed onto it. There's three easy steps that you take uh, to deploy an application using Live Sync onto a Samsung Galaxy Note. Uh, these uh, these steps are basically the same for, for virtually any Samsung device. So uh, if you have other Samsung devices, you can follow these steps and they should all work uh, pretty seamlessly. The, the three steps I'll show you, one is optional. The two first two are the most important. The first one is getting the device drivers for the Samsung device onto your PC. The only way that your PC can communicate with the device is if it has the device drivers. This is the same as if it was your PC communicating to a printer or a webcam. Without the device driver, the, the PC doesn't know how to communicate with the device. These are easy to get. You just go to developer.samsung.com, Android Tools SDKs, Samsung Android USB driver for Windows. And this will take you to a website where you can download an EXE that installs the Samsung USB drivers. And uh, these work for most of the current Samsung devices on the market today. The second thing you need to do is on the device itself is enable debug mode uh, or USB debugging. This enables the communication protocols to work between your PC and the device and more specifically it enables LiveSync to push application deployments onto the device so that you can uh, see how your application looks and runs on the device. And the third step is using the Android Debug Bridge, which this is an optional step, but you can use this to verify that the Android Debug Bridge is able to communicate with your device. And in this way, you'll be able to verify that the, the communication protocols are working, and in the event that there's something not going right, you can do some troubleshooting using this tool as well. As I mentioned, it's completely optional. Uh, you don't need to do this, but I'll show you how you do it anyway. So let's take a look at how we do this now. Some of the pieces, uh, some of the steps of this I've already done in the essence of time, but let me show you how you go through these process, these steps to uh, complete this and get Icenium Live Sync working with your device. The first step is you go to the Samsung Developers Portal on Samsung.com and find the tools and SDKs for Android devices and download the Samsung USB driver for mobile phones zip file. It's about a 27 megabyte download and this will uh, give you an EXE that when you run it will install the Samsung USB drivers for Android devices enabling you to communicate with those devices. Simply download and run the EXE. There's nothing else that really happens here. Uh, next thing you have to do is on the device itself. Now here I have my Samsung Galaxy Note 10 inch. Uh, it's ready to be used and I've actually already done the next step which is if I scroll up from the bottom corner and choose settings as I navigate through here I can find the settings for developer options and the very top setting in developer options is USB debugging. Now I've already checked that. When you do this you have to have the device unplugged from the USB connection from the PC, enable USB debugging and then plug in the device. And When you do that the device will look for the correct device drivers which you've already installed and then uh, it's set up uh, and, and ready to go as a sort of a plug and play device at that point. Now I'll go ahead and go back to home on the device, but if I come here to the Android Debug Bridge tool, this is something that is installed when you install Icenium Graphite, so you don't need to go get it, don't worry about that. Uh, it's already on your machine if you've installed Icenium Graphite. It's in your user directory under App Data Local Temp ADB, and that's where it's installed. All you need to do is type in ADB Devices, and this will give you a list of currently connected devices to your computer. So in this case, the uh, ADB server is getting fired off and up and running. And here you can see this device is attached, and it shows you the ID number of the device. Now, if I were to disconnect my device, so I'll go ahead and unplug it from USB, and I ran that utility again, it would show me that no devices are attached, and that's because I've disconnected it. So you can see how the communication protocol is working. When the device is attached, the Android debug bridge detects it, and it's able to tell you that the device is there. So now that the device is there, I'm going to go ahead and open up Graphite. We'll be able to look at the device and Graphite at the same time. And I'm going to create a new project. We'll call this uh, Samsung Galaxy Test. And I'll go ahead and click OK. And this will create a new blank Hello World project using the Apache Cordova template. Nothing 
uh, particularly extraordinary about this other than it's just going to show us that we have an application that we built and we'll be able to push it onto the device. I'm just going to give myself a little bit of room here. You can see the mobile device bubble indicates that we have one device connected and that is a GTN8013 which is the model number of the Galaxy Nexus 10 inch. You can find that if you were to go into the device and go to about this device you'd find that as the model number. More importantly you can see the identifier matches the identifier that we found when we ran the Android debug bridge. And that's how I can verify the right device is connected. If I have multiple devices connected at once, this is how I'll verify the correct device is there. Now, my application is ready to run, so I'll go ahead and choose Run on Device. And when I do that, that creates a build command for our Icenium compiler service. As you can see, it says down in the bottom left hand corner, it says Build Started. And you can see this spinning blue circle indicating that work is happening in the cloud. So we've triggered a build process and that's going to build an Android native package for us where it's an, uh, an APK package and that na native Android application package is going to be uh, compiled in the cloud and then pushed back down to the Icenium Graphite development environment and then pushed out from the development environment and you'll watch here as the little blue circle spun that it's now pushed out to the device. So if I come back out to the device you can see the application is there and I can now work with the application very iteratively and see those changes on the device. So for instance, Mycenium Live Sync rocks. And I'll go ahead and save that change and that will save the change directly out to the device. So now what I have on my device is a running application that I have a constant communication to with my development environment so I can work in a very rapid iterative fashion so I can see changes happening in the application on the device as they're happening. This is particularly useful if I want to take advantage of device capabilities like geolocation or the accelerometer or the camera in which I have to have the app running on the device to see how those things are going to interact and behave and uh, now I can begin using the app. So what you saw me do is just those very quick simple steps. I downloaded the device drivers and installed them and this will give me the de device drivers for um, most if not all of the Samsung Android based devices including the Galaxy S3, the S2 and um, the series of Galaxy Note devices including phones and tablets. I enable debug mode in the device and I would have to do this with every device I connect and that opens the device up to the communication protocols from my PC and just uh, as a way to verify that everything was working I used the uh, Android debug bridge to verify that the app was connected and being communicated with. It was that easy. Uh, super simple to get applications up and running on Icenium Live Sync. Uh, very quick and easy. You saw me do it here in a few minutes. So I encourage you to take your device, get it connected, try out LiveSync and see how fast and productive it makes you as you're building your applications. And I'll talk to you next time.